They may say this. 23 out of 65 students said they drink at least two cups of coffee per day. If the margin of error Uh, hold on. Uh, two cups of coffee per day. I drink at least two cups of coffee per day, as indicated by a sample. Okay. If the margin of error was. 3% estimate the proportion of students that drink at least two cups of coffee per day. A lot of words. You know what? People have told me, I've had people, I've had someone ask me this question. Somebody once told me, can you show me how to do this without reading? <laughs> and I always say, if I could do that, I'd be richer than Bill Gates. I'd bottle it and I'd what? Sell it. If, you, if I had that ability, could you imagine? I would sell it, Ed. You think people would buy it? <laughs> so let's think about this. What do you guys think is happening? This is where you guys say, oh, these problems are hard. <laughs> you, is it the two? Is it the... Well, what do, you, what do they ask you to do, first of all? Well, what, what, well, before that, what did they ask? Estimate. Estimate what? Proportion. What's your format? P hat minus the error, less than P, less than P hat, plus the error. See what I mean? If it tells me to estimate P, the first thing that comes into my mind is to write the format down. It's the first thing. I'm estimating a proportion. That's the question. So many people, I don't know what it is, but you know, identify what the question is. Because that's what they're asking. Right? So if it says estimate a proportion, ah, this is my format. You see, you see why I wrote it down? And then what and then where do I go from here? I determine two values. What values do I determine? P hat and the margin of error. If I do that, I'm done. Because then I add and then I subtract. Is that right? OK. So who can tell me? What's the margin of error? What's the margin of error? It's that 3% R, 0 0.03. Okay? 3% or 0 0.03. Anybody have any questions on that? How do you know that that's the margin of error? 
They just told you. I mean, they didn't tell you it. It says it. <laughs> okay? Huh? I know what it is. Oh, it's those math people. They're trying to trick you. It's not 3%, really. <laughs> right? All right, what else? What do you have to get? The sample what? Remember, think of voting. We have to know how many successes and how, uh, and how many are, are total in the sample. They told me this was a sample. How do I know? As indicated by a sample. So, hmm, what, is, what am I going to use? What am I going to use? What's the, what's the sample proportion? P hat, by definition, is the number of successes divided by the total. Total in the sample. Can you guys tell me how many people are in the sample? How many students? Is it 65? Then how many successes are there? There's 23? But what in the world does this, this 2 mean? What do I do with the 2? Huh? I don't do anything with the 2? Are you sure? You're positive. I don't do anything with that 2. That 2 has to... And this is a math class. Anytime you see a number, you plug it in somewhere. No? Then why did they put this here? Exactly. They're going to confuse you. Because they want you to get it wrong. But what's the real reason? In life, if you are interested in students and coffee, and you want to say a proportion of students drink coffee. That idea of drinking coffee, you have to really define. The, the problem is, we have to define things well. We have to be clear. And the irony is, we are usually so used to things being vague, we like it that way. We're comfortable that way. But the moment you are clear, if you don't notice this in your life, the moment you are crystal clear with people, you want to know how they feel? Other people feel very threatened. Do you guys notice that? When you are clear about something or you try to be clear, other people get really threatened by that. You ever notice or is it just me? Why do you think they get threatened by you being crystal clear about things? Because there's no room for what? <laughs> there's no room for, there's no room. And people don't like that. So when they say at least, when they want to define, what does it mean to be a coffee drinker? See this, Claudia? What it means to be a coffee drinker isn't that you have one cup a day. It isn't that you have one cup every five days. They're defining it to be what? At least two cups of coffee per what? Per day, OK? So when they give you that added, this is where students look at this and go, oh, forget it. When they give you the added information, it's only because they're trying to be clear with what it means to be a coffee drinker, at least two cups a day. Do you ever even think about that? About what would it mean to be a coffee drinker? See? And even that is something that other people will debate. Well, I think it should be one cup, I think it, but that's not the point. The point is you are defining what it means to be a what? Coffee drinker. And so all of this still applies. So you don't do anything with the two. The two is just putting your your problem in its proper context. It's just clarifying things. So, OK, then what is this 23 over 65? Points what? 3, 5, 4. OK. Yeah, this is a, this is a story. <laughs> Round to the nearest thousand. You'll see the thousands, we'll go with thousands. Why do we say thousands, Yoshi? Moshe, sorry. See this? This is the nearest tens, hundreds, right? OK, so you want to go one digit to the right. OK, so um, 0 0.354. 0 0.354. OK? So what do you get? as an answer. Point what? Point three two four. 
less than P, less than 0.38 what? 4. So here's what's going on. The true proportion of students who drink coffee is somewhere between 32.4% and 38.4%. That's the true proportion. That's where it would live. We're not even computing the value of it. We're computing the range in which it would live. And there's more to this story. I'm not going to you know, talk about it this second. But drinking coffee is at least two cups per day. What's your final answer? Huh? Do I need to put the 65 anywhere? No, because I used it to compute the sample proportion. Okay. Okay, you guys okay with this? Yes. This is the answer. Huh? What do you mean in what sense? You're not solving anything. You're not talking. No, okay, I see what you're saying. You guys are good, you know, you got the impression that it's undone. I, okay, I can understand that. You want to know why? Because you're not determining the value for P. P is living in an interval. It's, living, it's a possible range of values. So now we'll talk about that. Okay, this thing here, we got to talk about in more detail. This is known as. A confidence interval. This is a confidence interval. Because the real nature of a question that they'll give you, how they'll really give it to you, the actual language, can look like this. Okay? You guys ready for the actual language of what they'll give you? All right, what are you guys interested in? Let's think about this. What do you care about in terms of proportion? You guys care about anything in terms of proportion? How about this? A sample of 600, 600 what? Huh? Students? OK, 600 students reveal what? That. They what? Uh, let's see. Now, hold, let's say a sample of 600 students, students. Hold on. A sample of 600 students reveal that, let's say, 255 study more than eight hours per week on statistics. <laughs> Why do you guys laugh? <laughs> exactly. Now, if, if, if you studied nine hours, that means you're counted as a success. If you studied 10 or 12, you're counted. Okay? Just like t drinking at least two cups of coffee, some, some people can drink three, four, five. So a sample of 600 students revealed that 255 study more than eight hours per week on statistics. Oh, should we change that to 18? <laughs> 18, right? OK, 18. Um, Use the 95% confidence 